October 15th, Deadline Hollywood broke the scoop that Kevin Feige has been promoted even higher up at Marvel, as he now holds the title Marvel Chief Creative Officer. But what does that mean in practice? And did someone else get pushed aside to make way for Feige? In this editorial, I will go through the article, but cut through the noise to see what this really means and who just might have had to go. Before we get through these most recent news, let's take a brief look back in time to see how we got to where we are now. When Disney first acquired Marvel, or rather Marvel Entertainment, Marvel Studios was but a division under Marvel Entertainment. Kevin Feige ran Marvel Studios, but he both reported to and answered to Marvel Entertainment's Ike Perlmutter, who in turn reported to Disney's Alan Horn. This arrangement worked for a while, but there were always tensions between Feige and Perlmutter. You see, Feige wanted to push female characters and characters of color into the limelight in their own movies. Perlmutter wouldn't let him. Feige wanted to spend the money necessary to make the best movies possible. Perlmutter wanted to cut costs and corners, even at the expense of Feige's vision. Things came to a head during the planning of Phase 3 and the development of Captain America Civil War. There, Feige needed Robert Downey Jr., but Perlmutter wasn't interested in paying for that and told him to use another character in the Iron Man role. Feige also wanted to set up Black Panther to spin him off in a solo film, but Perlmutter would have none of that, because Black Panther is, you know, black. During this time frame, Kevin Feige was very open to the idea of leaving Marvel altogether. Disney CEO Bob Iger, however, understood how instrumental Kevin Feige was to Marvel's success, and diffused the situation by intervening. What he did was separating Marvel Studios from Marvel Entertainment, essentially making the Marvel Movie Division a new company run by Kevin Feige, who reported directly to Disney's Alan Horn. Ike Perlmutter remained in charge of Marvel Entertainment, and under him, Jeff Loeb ran Marvel's TV division. This was when Marvel on Film and Marvel on TV became more separated. The TV side still tried to be somewhat consistent with what happened on film, as seen in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but the films didn't give a rat's ass about what happened on TV. Marvel Studios, run by Feige, went from strength to strength. Marvel Entertainment and their TV division, well, that's a different matter. They gave us Daredevil, but they also gave us The Inhumans and Iron Fist, so a bit more hit and miss. More miss, actually. With that history lesson out of the way, let's cover the most recent events. Deadline Hollywood reports that Kevin Feige now is Chief Creative Officer Marvel. According to Deadline Hollywood sources, that means that all of Marvel's key creative executives across film and TV will now report to him. Which is a fancy way of saying that Kevin Feige is now ultimately in charge of everything that happens both on film and TV where Marvel is concerned. Before, he had nothing to do with Marvel on TV. Now, he's in charge of that too, both live action and animation. But to be clear, he isn't in charge of everything Marvel. The comic book division, as well as the merchandise operation, remains under Marvel Entertainment. Now you might wonder, why do this? Well, the answer appears at least in part to be Disney+, Plus, and we'll get back to that. And in my opinion, it was a long time coming and long overdue. The previous arrangement meant there was a clear-cut divide between Marvel movies and Marvel on TV. Not only that, even the Netflix series and the various series broadcast on ABC both of which were made under Marvel Entertainment, didn't fit all that well with each other and might as well have been in different continuities from each other, let alone the movies. With this move, that policy is quite likely at an end. Now everything, with the likely exception of animated series, will probably firmly take place within the same MCU of the movies. I expect more synergies between the upcoming series and the upcoming movies. Why? The article provides the answer to that, namely the aforementioned streaming service Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus is Disney's ticket to future dominance in the streaming wars, and Marvel will have a huge presence on it. To boost their output and subscriber appeal between the new movies, they will want a steady stream of TV series, the bulk of which will be deeply connected to the MCU proper, 
making them, in Disney's reasoning, must-see TV. To increase the connectivity, moving the TV division under Marvel Studios only makes sense. If anything, they should have done it long time ago. It's not like the construed line between Marvel on film and Marvel on TV benefited the TV division all that much anyway. Speaking of which... The article goes in some detail of who will serve in which role under the new arrangement. Dan Buckley will continue as president of Marvel Entertainment, where Ike Perlmutter remains chairman. It is expected that Joe Quesada will remain a creative lead of Marvel Entertainment, reporting to Buckley, alongside all the creative executives in publishing. The one who is not mentioned by a word here is Marvel TV president Jeff Loeb. Or maybe it is more accurate to say the former Marvel TV president Jeff Loeb. It is certainly within the realm of possibility that Loeb came with the move and will continue to serve in his previous role, but now report to Kevin Feige. That would mean an insulating layer between Feige and the respective showrunners, since he isn't mentioned by name even once in the article, which you'd think the Marvel TV president would be, seeing as Marvel TV is the operation that is being moved. As president of Marvel TV, there have been more misses released under his watch than hits. If things were going great, this move likely wouldn't have happened in the first place. Even among the Netflix shows, there were arguably more misses than hits. That being said, many miss more seasons of the Netflix shows. Daredevil, of course, The Punisher, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, hell, some might even want more Iron Fist, though I cannot fathom why. Is there any chance of that happening? Well, as you may recall, when Disney made it known that they were taking all Disney content away from Netflix to put it on Disney+, Plus, Netflix responded by cancelling all the Marvel Netflix series. Due to prior agreements, each character will, following cancellation, be frozen for a period of two years during which Marvel can do nothing with them. After that, Marvel can make new projects featuring these characters, but Netflix retains the series they paid for. Many have speculated that Marvel will, one way or the other, reboot these characters. But there is a rumor suggesting that they might not. What I'm about to relay are rumors that have reached me. Nothing of what follows can be independently verified, and I have not been able to cross-reference this, so what follows must be taken with a grain of salt and as the rumors they are. That health warning out of the way. These rumors concern the Netflix shows. And what they claim is that once the legal freeze period is over, Marvel will continue making new seasons of the Netflix shows. No rebooting, no recasting, they'll just pick up from where they left off. Apparently, Netflix do not own these incarnations of the characters, only the seasons they paid for. So once the freeze period is over, Marvel can't continue making them, they just have to distribute them somewhere else. That somewhere else is reportedly FX, the channel specializing in mature content, which Disney got with the Fox acquisition. As such, the Netflix series, Daredevil, The Punisher, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist and even The Defenders, if all of them indeed are picked up, will continue to be TVMA which is TV for Rated R. After premiering on FX, they will be found on Hulu, which Disney now has majority ownership of. That's where they'll put all their content, which is too edgy for Disney+. As for the previous seasons that Netflix paid for and therefore outright own, the plan is apparently to buy them from Netflix and put them on Hulu as well. You see, Netflix has no further need of any Marvel show after Disney Plus goes live as all they'd be doing at that point is promoting the competition. Netflix would rather have its own exclusive you can't get anywhere else, like you know He-Man, because they could suddenly be in a position where they have both the animated He-Man revival series, the animated She-Ra series, and, if Sony has their way, even the in-development live-action He-Man reboot. Anyway, that diversion aside, let's get back to the Marvel Netflix rumors because there may be a catch to what I just told you. While I cannot speak for their validity, these rumors to me sound plausible. However, 
it should be noted that these rumors stem from before Feige was promoted. That matters, because Marvel TV president Jeff Loeb was one of those pushing to continue the series he developed for Netflix on FX and on Hulu. Where does that leave the Netflix shows? Assuming for the sake of argument that these rumors were indeed accurate, will Feige agree with Loeb that continuing the series begun on Netflix, on FX and Hulu is the way to go? Or does he have other plans for these characters once the freeze period is over? I wish I knew. What would you like to see happen? And what do you think about Feige now controlling Marvel on TV as well? Let me know in the comments.